Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Absolutely Not Podcast. I'm coming to you live from the Dear Media Studios in West Hollywood. Good to be back with my producer, Michelle. What up, girlfriend? Oh, wait, I need to be on. Oh, no, you don't have to. She's here. She's in the studio. Um, That would have been so sad, though, if I was just like, here, hanging out with so many friends, and then y'all realize I was just alone. Um... Y'all, it's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. I have a lot to bitch about in the sense that it's been a wild morning, okay? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what happened to friggin' me today. I wake up at like 3 a.m. to all of these text messages and phone calls because some fucking asshat, which is my new phrase, I don't know why, but I'm very into this phrase, um, posted my phone number on all my Instagrams saying, call Heather. Now, here's the deal. I love chit-chatting with everybody. But really and truly, it comes down to this. I have had the same phone number since I got a phone when I was 15 and got my fucking learning permit. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to change my phone number. I, it's it's the point of the fact. Yes, it feels a bit violating. Please don't call me, okay? My mom already calls me 65 times a day, and it's enough. But literally, this guy whose Instagram name was like Enzo the Pug, first of all, used to like pugs, fucking hate him now, okay? Now that I've had to report this guy's Instagram handle, I just don't want to change my number. Jeff's like, babe, too many people know your number now. You're going to have to change it. It's just like, it feels like a violation of your privacy, So I woke up to like 60 people texting me and calling me. Some guy sent me a photo of his blood pressure machine and said, Heather, what do I do? My blood pressure seems high. I'm like, sir, call 911. Like, don't, you know, don't send me a photo of your rash and then be like, is this psoriasis? I'm going to tell you it is. Okay? Point blank, period. So that's my fucking day. Then I get on, okay, then I see a number calling me and I'm avoiding all these numbers because random people are calling me all morning. I'm like, all right, all right. Uh, I'm going to answer this though. For some reason, my gut told me to answer this. So it's an Atlanta number. It's this doctor that I've been trying to get in to get this surgery done because you know I have an ovarian cyst. If you listen to my episode, Ovaries on a Plane, the best episode ever. Um, I've been trying to get this surgery. So it's like, fuck it. I'm just going to answer this number, see who it is. So this doctor didn't even give me like a, what's good? How you been? How was Asia? Gucci gang, what'd you buy? Do you have a parasite? Nothing. I When I went into this doctor's appointment two weeks ago, I basically went to say, hey, I've got an ovarian cyst situation. I'd like to schedule surgery. Well, they can't get me into like June, so this isn't going to work. He then sat me down and was like, when do you want to have kids? And I said, you know, I'd probably like to have kids in two to three years, right? Uh, career's popping off. Things are happening. I want to get through my wedding. So when I had this original conversation with him, he mentioned that I should freeze my eggs. He said that even if you want to have kids in a couple years, you know, having kids with 32-year-old eggs as opposed to having kids with 36-year-old eggs is is better. So I said, okay, whatever. We had a brief conversation. You know, I guess when you sign up with a new guy, now they have to ask you, I don't know, are you fertile or not? Who the fuck knows? So then this guy calls me. He's like, Heather, uh, let's call him Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown got your test results back. Egg count dangerously low. (laughs) I can't even say this without laughing. Like, dangerously low. Um, You're up about 0.3. I need you to 1.5 to conceive. So here's the deal. If you want to have kids, let's check it in about six months. And if after that, uh, after six months of trying, you can't get pregnant, we're going to have to send you to a specialist. I'm like, wait, hold on. One, good morning. Two, what results? Three, I didn't know you ever checked my egg count. Four, I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. Like the whole conversation was so jarring. He's like, ooh, and then let's take a look at your thyroid. Numbers came back normal, but you're heavy set. So we know that that's got to be a... Uh, a mess up in the charts. I'm <laughs> just like, what the fuck? I said, so, okay, let me get this straight. All right, it's 6 a.m. L.A. time, and you're throwing a lot at me. I've got low egg count. My thyroid came back normal, but you don't believe it. And you think I need to try and get pregnant in the next six months. I'm confused. Were you not awake when we had our initial consultation, sir? So fucking confused. So I basically, my morning consisted of, you know, a a bunch of fucking randoms sending me messages. Although some of y'all got creative with it. 
And here's the thing. I want to chit-chat with people. You know, celebrities are doing this thing now where they're like, hey, I want to feel like close to the community. Text me. I'm going to do one of those. I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm going to figure it out because I'd rather just have another number where I can just chit-chat with my babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to, you know, I like to chit-chat. Although I personally, I've said this before, I'm more of a phone call kind of gal. So maybe, I don't know what this app is that these celebs are using, but maybe it could be a thing where we can just chit-chat. You know, I can just call some of y'all. Random Tuesday. You know, I don't know, call Mark. See how his job at Bank of America is going. You know, maybe he's stressed. Maybe he's on his lunch break. Maybe he wants to chit-chat about the housewives. I don't know. That's what I'm into. But I just feel like having, I don't know what the what the point of this random asshole just posting my number everywhere was. And guys, I'm nobody. I'm no fucking buddy. Post like Paris Hilton's number. Don't people want to like chit chat with her about, I don't know, shoes? That was, I hated that. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, you, you're better than that, Heather. But um, you know what though? Paris Hilton wears a size 11 shoe and I do too. And I remember like years ago when it came out in an interview that she wears like size 11 Louboutins, I was like, oh my God, what if I like send her kind of like a Make-A-Wish foundation letter? Like, dear diary, <laughs> dear Paris, I have enormous fucking feet and I'm poor. Can you send me all of your old Louis Vuittons that you've worn once on the red carpet? I will take them. She did not respond to my letter, um, which still a little bitter about. But in the meantime, just, you know, you know what pisses me off? That this, this guy who has six, I'm going to get, I'm going to guess it's a guy because I just feel like a woman would be like, you know what? Heather's got enough on her plate. But this guy has every single time I've del- like blocked this person who keeps posting, call Heather. Y'all don't call me. I love you, but I'm busy. Um, every single new account that he opens, it's a new pug in his photo. I used to like pugs. I always thought pugs looked like old Vietnamese men for some reason in the face. Like there's something tender about them. You know what I mean? They got curly tails. They're brachycephalic dogs, much like French bulldogs. But now pugs are ruined for me. So Enzo the pug, you might be a cute dog, but your owner's a fucking asshole. Okay, and that's it. Facts are facts. Anyways, that's what I'm up to. Okay, y'all, I got to tell you exactly what happened. I have to throw Jeff under the bus for a hot second. So Jeff wanted to surprise me. It's like an eightfold story. It's our 10-year anniversary, and Jeff wanted to surprise me with um, us getting married. We have to legally get married in the States before we get married in Italy. We're getting married in Italy in the fall, but regardless, that's kind of like a, you know, it's like a ritual ceremony. It's not actually uh, a legal ceremony because in order to get married in a different country, it's actually a shit show to do. So we were like, all right, what's a special date for us? We're going to try and get married on our 10-year anniversary at the courthouse. Do it cute. So Jeff comes in town yesterday, and he, okay, first of all, we sit at John and Vinny's. Shout out to John and Vinny's. They're fantastic. We're sitting there having pizza, doing our thing, and Jeff throws out this Cartier bag. <clears throat> Literally, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's our 10-year. He just got me something really fucking nice. Now, if you know Cartier jewelry, which I have never in my entire life been able to afford. It's been on the vision board. Like, I'm not in this place. But Jeff has this, like, very old, excuse me, <coughs> dry as hell up in here um he bought himself a watch whatever when he graduated da, 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 whatever anyways I'm not gonna justify if you want to buy fucking nice jewelry live your truth so he hands me this bag and it's it looks like a bracelet bag and so I open it and I'm like oh my god he's like here I got a surprise for you I've been carrying this around forever said the word surprise so surprise would be something that you don't know okay I'm pretty sure by definition surprises hey this is new information I open up the bag, it's my engagement ring in it. Immediately, my heart drops down to my colon and I'm like, oh, well maybe then I keep looking in the bag like maybe there's a band, you know what I mean? I'm like, maybe he already bought the wedding band. And I said, it's my ring. And he goes, yeah, I know you weren't wearing it when you were in Asia, you left it back at the apartment because you know I didn't want to travel abroad with it, so I wanted you to wear it because you know, you've been acting like a hussy without it, like made a joke. And in my, in my mind, I went, <laughs> you bastard. You know, I had that moment where I was actually disappointed. I thought I was getting a gift. So then this fucker tells me, he's like, you say I'm never uh, spontaneous. 
uh, how about we get married tomorrow? And I said, great, let's get married tomorrow. That's fantastic. We knew we were going to just like, quote unquote, like do the legal ceremony, elope, do something cute for us. He's like, so tomorrow we're going to go to Santa Barbara. And I'm like, Jeff, Santa Barbara is like two hours away. He's like, we can take the train up there. I'm like, I've got meetings all morning. I don't know who, you, like, did you not check the sketch? I told you what was going on. He's like, no, 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 Santa Barbara's like down the street. He thought it was Santa Monica. <laughs> he thought Santa Monica and Santa Barbara were the same place. Now, riddle me this. We've been to Santa Barbara multiple times. I don't know if, like, the lights aren't on upstairs, if he just played too much golf this weekend and just broed out so fucking hard that his fucking golf sock tan is making him dumber. But I said, okay, well, honey, that's – so Santa Monica and, and Santa Barbara, two, about two hours away. So let's go ahead and, and you know, I, that's fine. We can go to Santa Monica, um, but, you know, let's do some light Googling. So he gets on the Googler. This is after I thought I was getting a gift. I didn't get the gift. Now he's doing light Googling. He's like, shit, okay, well, Santa Monica and Beverly Hills, uh, you got to get the certificate one day, you know, the license one day, and then the following day you can go get married. But it's good for 90 days. And I'm like, Jeff – we're leaving early on Wednesday. I'm not getting up at 7 a.m. to marry your ass in Beverly Hills and then sit in fucking traffic to LAX. Did not say this out loud. Buried it deep down into my titties. And so I'm just smiling and nodding like, okay. And so, I don't know. We might be getting married this afternoon. I'm going to see if we can pull some strings. And then Michelle, my producer, made a good point. She said, Heather, I guarantee there's a list. Like, you got to know somebody to know somebody to get on a list to get married in Santa Monica or Beverly Hills. You know, it's like trying to get into fucking Tao or Catch. Or I don't know where the fucking cool kids go, you know. Where do they go? The nice guy. So what my point is, is I feel like Jeff... This is what men do. Straight men always do this. They're like, I plan a surprise. I got it. But then they do half-ass work. You know, and trust me, Jeff is so romantic. He's so great. He's so thoughtful. But I'm like, you didn't, you wanted to plan this whole surprise, but you didn't do the research. Like, I, he's had a lot of time. I've been in Asia for two and a half weeks. He could have at any point been just sitting on our nice linen couch in our apartment in New York just farting he could have just googled didn't like google what's the protocol to get married in a day in Los Angeles and he throws his information at me at 4 45 on a Monday so I'm like we can't even get to the courthouse now to get the certificate all I know is right now I'm wearing an oversized fucking white button down I look like Ina Garden if she was in the future I this could hide nine months of pregnancy but in reality Children may be a challenge, thanks to Dr. Brown's phone call this morning. It's my anniversary. I cannot get married legally today because Jeff didn't do the research. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm fucking lit right now, and I'm sorry, but I need y'all to know that in my life, when shit's stirring up, it's like, Jeff, I just need you to follow through with a Google search, you know? And then... I said, honey, so, okay, so yesterday, I'm on fucking Asia time, so we fall asleep, right? We take a nap, and I said, Jeff, set an alarm. We can take a nap for one hour, then we got to get up, shower, go to dinner. This fucker didn't set an alarm. Of course, he and I could nap. I, I'm like a polar bear, okay? I curl into a little glacier, and I'm sleeping for four fucking weeks. We wake up, it's 1030 at night. I said, great, now I'm really fucked. Now I'm going to be up till 2 a.m., He's like, babe, go back to bed. I'm like, Jeff, I can't sleep from 5 p.m. to then, th like, I'm going to wake up at 2 a.m. fucking starving. That's how my body works. So I go upstairs. I have two margaritas at the top of the hotel. I come back down. Jeff's still snoozing. And I wake his ass up. And I say, babe, I got to look you dead in the eyes. I can't hold it any longer. You got me today at lunch. You got me. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, when you threw that jewelry bag at me, I thought, this is it. This is the moment. I'm getting a gift. And he, his little face, though, it was kind of precious. He's like, oh, no, I was just giving you your ring mark. <laughs> and I was like, honey, but you realize you gave it to me in a, a real red, shiny Cartier bag that looked like it was in the shape of a bracelet. He was like, oh, no, babe, that was my old watch bag. Shit, now that I'm realizing how that came off, I can see your frustration. 
Now, any man in their right mind would at that moment go, you know what, babe, you deserve it. Tomorrow, let's go get you that gift. But instead, he said, hey, will you call room service and order me a turkey club? And I almost punched him in the dick. I was like, this is it. You're getting up. But I, I, you know, I can't punch him in the dick because at this point, I need all of his swimmers because I got one good egg of fucking apparently, thanks to Dr. Brown. So I'm in a catch-22 right now. Also, side note, y'all know I love room service. Nothing makes me happier than going somewhere fancy, putting on a robe, and paying like $78 for a club sandwich. It is wasteful. It is stupid. It is a monopoly. I understand why hotels do it. But when you're at a good hotel that has like good room service, that is literally like my absolutely yes is that. So, of course, I'm like, oh, now you're on board. Now you're on board for, oh, je ne sais quoi, a $75 turkey sandwich? When Jeff's always like, that's so wasteful, Heather, that's ridiculous. You can get the same sandwich at a diner downstairs, okay? Also, I don't know why earlier I did his voice as like Bill and the Surfer, and now he's back to Italian. It's because he woke up. I don't fucking know. So this guy's just, I'm watching him. I'm seething. I'm watching him at 1 a.m. eat this turkey sandwich that he always bitches at me about forgetting. I'm like, if this fucker doesn't show up with some piece of jewelry, a faux fur, a French bulldog with one leg, with a, a, a bow around its neck that says, I love you, thanks for putting up with my ass for 10 years, I can't even punch him in the dick. And that's what's the saddest part. I'm not promoting violence against your spouse. I'm just saying it's nice sometimes to just give a nice tap to the nuts to remind your partner What's good? <laughs> this is so fucked up. I, again, ladies, if you're listening, gentlemen, if you're listening, do not hit your partner in the genitalia unless they enjoy that. Can I be honest with you? I don't know if I've said this before, but you know the song, Beat the Pussy Up, Beat the Pussy Up. I don't understand that. At no point do I want anyone to beat my pussy up. What, are you just speed bagging my crotch? No, lightly caress it. Until something happens. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. Beat the pussy up. Beat the pussy up. Like, you're just going to karate kick my crotch? Absolutely not. Um, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I know we're going to get back to the voicemails. I know you've missed them. I've missed them. So we're going to get into the voicemails right now. And I want to hear what's been going on with y'all. I've been absentee. I've been on the road. So let's hear from y'all. Hey, Heather, this is Emma from Memphis, Tennessee. Me and my girlfriend are spending our Friday night eating pizza, drinking wine, watching a movie. We pick up the pizza on the way to her house. The car next to me, it's running. Look over, and what do I see? Two 16-year-olds, this boy's in the driver's seat. We make eye contact, the girl in the seat, giving him a blowjob. <laughs> I've never been so disgusted in my life, and I think I was more embarrassed than he was. Uh, oh my God, absolutely not to teen pregnancy. Okay, this is so funny. First of all, shout out to myself because when I looked at this, I saw that 901 area code and I said, my girl's from Memphis. And sure enough, you confirmed it. A shout out to Memphis. Love that city. Listen, I, I tell you what, once you get to a certain age, like I, my, for me, it was like 25. If I saw anybody under that looked under the age of 24 and a half, I'd be like, you're a child. Does your mother know where you are? First of all, let's break down this whole situation. I love you. You went, you didn't even order delivery. You're like, no, we're going to go to that artisanal pizza shop. You know what I mean? We're going to go to the Napoleano, the Napoli place. Like You literally were like, we're going to go, me and my girl, I'm going to guess her name's like Madison. Me and my girl Madison are having a pizza night. Fuck yeah. We've got our wine. We got our Boda Box, boxed wine. We're ready to go. But see, you splurged and you got that expensive pizza. And then I just love, like, everything about how you broke this down. You're like, the car is running. Like, you automatically got an old Memphis voice. Let me tell you what, Heather. The car was running. And I look over, and there is a boy. And when they got contact, and he looks me dead in my eyes, and his girlfriend's getting him a blowjob in broad daylight. It is dusk. (laughs) I feel, I feel you. Also, can I be honest with you? Like, I, well, how old was I when I gave my first blowjob? I think I was like 17 or 18. No. I don't know. Honestly, I can't remember. 
I was given hand jobs like, you know, they were going out of style. Let me tell you what, I had go, two, two at one going. You know, I'd be at a party just, what up, Chad and Dylan? Let's roll. And because it wasn't weird. Hand jobs were just like everyone was trying to figure out their body. But a BJ, a BJ in broad daylight? Savage. Please tell me you followed that. Please, I would have done something like I'm like knocked on the window, like t- taking a photo. I am calling your mother. She's in my bunko group and I'm gonna let her know. Absolutely not. And but you know that like you went home with your artisanal pizza and your box of wine and you sat on your couch with your girlfriend Madison. You're like, Madison, we never did that shit when we were growing up. And then Madison kindly reminded you, Hey girl, do you remember the- when you gave Tommy a blowjob in the eighth grade, you little hussy, and you're like, God damn it, you're right. I need to cut them some slack. But absolutely not to teen pregnancy. It's not worth it. But maybe, actually, in all fairness to the girl, maybe she that's she was avoiding it by, you know, giving him a BJ. I don't know. Kids are bold these days. Listen, I've said this before. You get on the TikToks. Have you seen what these kids are doing? What what really irks me is there's this group of, and I sound like a pedophile just even saying this. There's a group of these young guys. They're probably like 15 or 16. They all have tongue rings, and they're famous TikTokers. I couldn't tell you the names off the top of my head, but they always pop up, and people will send it to me. And it's like these guys have like long, shaggy hair, and they do these really over-sexualized TikToks where they like, you know when you bite, like if somebody has a tongue ring and they like bite their tongue ring to be like, oh yeah, look at my tongue ring. These guys do these dances to like genuine wine songs like yeah honey let's do it and they're grinding and I remember the first time somebody sent it to me and they just said like where are their parents and I was so freaked the fuck out I'm like wait a minute wait a minute this is what dudes are doing like sexy strip tees they all think they're a magic mic these kids were probably 15 I was like do not delete this I feel even though they're clothed I feel like the authorities are going to show up at my fucking house with Chris Hansen and be like you weren't supposed to see that but then my girlfriend who's got an older kid said, this is what they're doing these days. It's fucking weird. Well, I've got one egg left. I might not be having kids. Honestly, I think I need to adopt a 22-year-old. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to adopt a grown-ass kid. Oh, you're in your 20s? You just want to go to college, live your best life? Come on over to, you know, mom and dad's house. I'm, You know, I don't know. You know, I was talking with Michelle, my producer, and I said, at this point, probably adoption's majorly on the table. But I said, no matter where I adopt a child from, because I would love to adopt, they will have a thick Italian name, okay? Like if I get a kid from, you know, say, wherever God wants me to get a child from, say the opportunities in like Ethiopia, I will have an Ethiopian child with a name like Giovanni, you know what I'm saying? Or like maybe a, a sweet Russian daughter, and I name her like Angelica, like... <laughs> It'll be an Italian name, even though I'm going to have such a multicultural, diverse, adopted family like Madonna, but every single one of my kids is going to be named Michelangelo. And that's facts. Those are facts. Michelle, are you on the mic? I'm on the mic. Okay. Michelle, please tell the listeners what you just told me about your girlfriend that you went to high school with. I grew up in Los Angeles, and there's a lot of characters growing up here, a lot of diversity. It's a very fun place to grow up. But I went to high school with one girl who was... Adopted from Cambodia, I believe, and she was adopted by two gay Jewish TV producers. Fuck it up. Yes. Her name was Susie Nakamura Cohen. (laughs) So good. True story. True story. She had a bar mitzvah. Fuck yeah. And it was just a beautiful blended family. I love that. Susie Nakamura Cohen. That's just great. Yeah, see? You got to, you know, it's a little Jewish. Nakamura, I think, is Japanese. No? I just pulled for a middle yeah, name, to be honest. Fine. I okay. don't remember her middle name. I just went with something. Great. Now we have cultural appropriation yep. because we got the name. <laughs> and I might have to lose that one. <laughs> no, keep it. It's great. It's great. It's great. Yell at Heather and not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. But no, that's amazing. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. So I don't know how we went from teens getting blowjobs to your pizza party. You know what? Thank you for that call. Live your life. Absolutely not. If you've got a young teen... Go check their internet browser history and make sure they're not being fucking creeps. And also, have a tracker on their car. And also, apparently moms hang outside pizza parlors because that's where these kids are getting freaky. Honestly, you sound ready for parenthood. I don't. 